Section 1 of Beyond the Stars. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nemo. Beyond the Stars by Charles Hanson Town. Beyond the Stars. Three days I heard them grieve when I lay dead. It was so strange to me that they should weep. Tall candles burned about me in the dark, and a white crucifix was on my breast, and a great silence filled the lonesome room. I heard one whisper, Lo, the dawn is breaking, and he has lost the wonder of the day. Another came, whom I had loved on earth, and kissed my brow, and brushed my dampened hair. Softly she spoke, Oh, that he should not see the April that his spirit bathed in. Birds are singing in the orchard, and the grass that soon shall cover him is growing green. The daisies whiten on the emerald hills, and the immortal magic that he loved wakens again, and he has fallen asleep. Another said, Last night I saw the moon like a tremendous lantern shine in heaven, and I could only think of him and sob, for I remembered evenings wonderful when he was faint with life's sad loveliness, and watched the silver ribbons wandering far along the shore and out upon the sea. Oh, I remembered how he loved the world, the sighing ocean and the flaming stars, the everlasting glamour God had given, his tapestries that wrap the earth's wide room. I minded me of mornings filled with rain, when he would sit and listen to the sound, as if it were lost music from the spheres. He loved the crocus and the hawthorn hedge. He loved the shining gold of buttercups, and the low droning of the drowsy bees that boomed across the meadows. He was glad at dawn or sundown, glad when autumn came, with her worn livery and scarlet crown, and glad when winter rocked the earth to rest. Strange that he sleeps today when life is young, and the wild banners of the spring are blowing with green inscriptions of the old delight. I heard them whisper in the quiet room. I longed to open then my sealed eyes and tell them of the glory that was mine. There was no darkness where my spirit flew. There was no night beyond the teeming world. There April was like winter where I roamed. Their flowers were like stones where now I fared. Earth's day, it was as if I had not known what sunlight meant. Yea, even as they grieved for all that I had lost in their pale place, I swung beyond the borders of the sky and floated through the clouds, myself the air, myself the ether, yet a matchless being whom God had snatched from penury and pain to draw across the barricades of heaven. I clomb beyond the sun, beyond the moon. In flight on flight, I touched the highest star. I plunged to regions where the spring is born. Myself, I ask not how, the April wind. Myself, the elements that are of God. Up flowery stairways of eternity, I whirled in wonder, in untrampled joy. An atom, yet a portion of his dream. His dream that knows no end. I was the rain. End of poem. Peace by Charles Hanson Town. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Peace. 
There is a rumor of eternal peace. The wonderful wild news sweeps through the world that nevermore loud drums shall beat alarms, or bugles blow the awful songs of war. There shall be silence where the sabers clashed, and utter calm where once the cannon roared. The Lord's green field shall not be wet with blood, but white with innocent daisies in the spring. And where the crashing cavalry once plunged, our hearts shall hear the lyrics of the birds, when soft May mornings break in years to be. No more shall men of alien races march, with fiery hearts and madness in their eyes, to crush their weaker brothers neath their heel. Nor women wait through aching days of grief, through pitiless hours of barren loneliness, for husbands and young sons to come back home. No more shall children stir in the long nights, dreaming of absent fathers, and no more shall faithful hounds whine at bleak thresholds, sick for one whose feet fled when the trumpets called. White peace, the whisper runs, shall wrap the earth, and hushed be all the thundering cannonade. Wise men have dreamed this dream, and I have dared to dream it every hour of the years. When I have stood high in some starlit hill, and watched the moon go her great silver way, in silence that was deeper than the heavens. When I have seen the majesty of night, and in my contemplation learned that life was but a thread on time's immortal loom, my life the least of all. In nations less than ribbons that are fashioned at the last in one divine, amazing, sumptuous plan. Then I have wondered at our boast and pride, and marveled at the shallowness of kings, the madness of all those who rise to lead their little countries in tempestuous strife, and break men's bodies and break women's hearts. Be swift. O laggard years to bring that day, when right shall be the master of old might, and love with her soft processes shall see her hour triumphant and her legions large. Tear down the bulwarks of incessant hate, and let pale pity rise from the dull dust, her unfamiliar eyes two flashing stars emerging from the shadows of the deep. But dream not there shall be eternal peace, though red battalions have been scattered far, and mighty armies lost like autumn winds. Call in the iron navies of the world, and sink them in the ocean's monstrous heart. Sunder the bastions of the universe, the watchful forts that face the open sea. Still we shall hear the rumors of great wars, and see the smoke of conflict. We shall know the old, old battle of the rich and poor. The poor with watchfires in the engine room and regiments of children in the mills. The rich with beacon lights upon their hearths and golden domes their perfumed tents at night. But when wild winter bears her icy sword, one army shall remember Valley Forge and tremble at the menace of the days one army shall meet endless Waterloos in the long line of years that sing defeat, and in their tattered uniforms march on, till death, the last commander, bids them halt. There shall be desolation in their eyes, and sorrow where they pitch their city camps, and rag shall be the emblem of their cause, sad banners that reveal their very shame. Dream not of peace eternal, till there comes some hour supreme, when these two hosts shall meet in a great whirlwind of high brotherhood. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ira Perennius by Charles Hanson Town. Read for LibriVox.org. By Nima. Aira Perennius. One. 
I never learned the wonder of that lane, drenched with the summer rain, where through my boyish feet were wont to pass, until I left it for the passionate town, marble and iron and brass, filled with all laughter, yea, and filled, alas, with life's immortal pain. Then I beheld its magic. Then I knew how every rosebud grew, how every leaf rocked in the wind-blown noon. Far, far away, I saw it beneath the moon on matchless nights of June, when the untarnished silver of the sky poured through the boughs, and two young lovers whispered deathless vows. And then I heard each song enraptured bird pipe his mad music as we wandered by i breathed the fragrance of the hawthorn flowers i drank the joy that the black cup of night poured for my youth's delight while round about me from great steeples and towers the punctual city clocks sounded the rushing hours i shall go back some day to the enchantment of that wildwood way I shall know once again the scent of musk in the cool summer dusk, and lay my head upon night's pillow, lay my fevered body where the blossoms sway against the velvet curtains of the dark. I shall see glowworms light their little spark in the hushed evening, hear the crickets croon and marvel at the moon. Yet will it all be lovely when I take the ancient road for ancient love's white sake can life repeat one word of her old story restore her tattered glory revive the dead allure of her first days i am enamored of the city's face and shameless i am lost in her embrace her flashing fiery eyes sweep and control my piteous soul Two. I shut the door on the world's bright face. I fled from the race. And I clung to the breast of the holy night, as if the dark were the bosom of God. I knelt me down on the clean green sod, and I looked at the constellations white as they swung above me on that blue height. I, who was lost and crushed and driven, Reach till it seemed I must reach to heaven and snatch the stars from the hands of the Lord. I, who had lost myself in the maze of crowded ways and terrible days, had come to the hour that all men need after the grime and dust and greed. Yet I said no word, for speech was vain and I could not pray. I only knew I had found the way, and quiet and worn and tired, in the great night I lay. 3. I never knew the wonder of your eyes. Forgive me, angel in a woman's guise, until I left you for the gleam and lure that never can endure. I left you for adventures strange and wild, a man who was a child. I followed gypsy patterns and trails, oceans and sorrows, joys and stinging gales, lights in the distant vales. I followed gold and beauty and the bright moment's duty. I fared to cities of immortal fame and drank the wine of shame. Hate o'er the world and love o'er the world I found in paths unknown of men. In tumult and in passion I was drowned, in falseness and in fury I was bound. Yet always at the last, when the dread days were past, dreams of you came again. I who had fled from your enduring heart to wander ways apart, knew the rich dream of you ever, ever, unto the end. Why did I leave all that I loved the best for a sad quest? 
why did the wind's voice on the open road sing till i stifled in my warm abode why did the rivers call me and the sea whisper of shadowy islands strangely blessed why did i leave my furrow and my friend for dim uncertainty why did i then forget a woman's face a woman's eyes and torture love with longing love is wise and we are fools who leave her sheltering place yet wonder beckoned me i followed her with the first leaf's light stir four i came to you from the stress of life sick with sorrow and doubt and strife i dared to touch your garment's hem the flooding tears i could not stem you had remained like an absolute star you had been firmer than the high hills you had been constant though i was gone like the pale dawn your mouth was the rose that i had lost your face was the moon that i had missed your eyes were the steadfast planets of heaven given me once and once again given your hair was the cloud that god had tossed above the light of your shining face your breath was the perfume of old crushed roses that once i drank in youth's garden closes your voice was the bird that my soul had heard in the wildwood peace when it sang the word you were the sure unchanging sun lighting me back from the road i had run i dared to return and breathe your name i dared to show you my desperate shame i dared to dream that the shattered story the ancient good the tattered glory could be restored but i dared not say the words that even a judas may yet in that hour you kissed my lips and in the hushed darkness alone we lay end a poem this recording is in the public domain A Ballad of Shame and Dread by Charles Hanson Town Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo A Ballad of Shame and Dread One The rain rushed by in silver sheets. I crossed the empty thoroughfare with visions of my glowing fire when I had climbed my lodging stair. The wind was whispering like a ghost. The lights were chains lost in a blur and as i hurried on i heard a voice that said good evening sir we men know well that ancient sound a many a fair and starlit night that strives to hail us tenderly to prospects of a sad delight but on a storm-swept night like this how strange it was that there should be one of that mighty army out willing to sell herself to me i turned astonished in her eyes i saw the old old look of pain poor painted girl whose face was wan and terrible in the falling rain i read a message in her gaze that i had never read before and as i paused the tempest shook and rattled every neighboring door it was not passion that evoked the sudden impulse in my heart but swiftly from the windy street i drew the lonely girl apart i told her that her eyes looked tired i never knew such eyes could be she smiled that tragic smile of hers and like a hound went home with me two the fire was ruddy on my hearth it lit the corners of the room i poured some sherry from a flask and drew two great chairs from the gloom and from my cupboard i brought forth a little supper just a snack mysteriously she smiled when i pulled my best pipe down from its rack outside the wind howled through the night in desperate delirium and on my roof the rain beat fast as if upon a muffled drum her cloak fell back her hood fell too 
I saw her wonderful gold hair, a cataract of glowing fire that shamed my hearth's reflected flare. It was her eyes that held me most. I never dreamed such eyes could be, tired as the dust of ancient queens or ruined cities by the sea. How strangely from their blue-gray depths they quietly searched through my own, they held the knowledge of the years, how much, how much they must have known. She saw my rows of friendly books, my littered desk, pipes, and cigars, O oh, homely things made lovelier now, since they fell on you, two strange stars. But always back to me they came, as if in wonder, half afraid, yet even on her fragile hands, no kiss of mine had yet been laid. Three. Long, long we sat without one word. Somewhere a clock boomed forth its chime. I did not count its distant strokes. I did not heed the hurrying time. At last she stirred. I saw her lips part for an instant and then close. Red lips whose crimson made them seem the painted wraiths of some dead rose. Again they parted and she spoke. I never knew a man before who had not told me his desire the moment that I crossed his door. And yet, her tears fell like the rain. You have not claimed your old grim right. Ah, can it be, you guess, strange friend, the wonder you have wrought tonight? I am as others of my kind. I fell, the worn-out tale of pain. You knew me for a harlot, still. You snatched me from the wind and rain. You gave me bread, you gave me wine. You let me sit before your fire. I, whom you found upon the streets, a pallid daughter of desire. You pitied me, and that was all. Oh, would you guessed how my soul flew the instant that I read your heart and dared to dream of loving you. Yes, do not smile. I dared to dream the dream that every harlot kills, lest it should lift her to the heights, lift her to the exalted hills. We cannot love save for an hour, then on to lesser loves we fare. Each night, each week, each month, each year, they dwindle and we reap despair. That is our dread that we may love. Our shame would drag a good man down if he should ever deign to stoop to stoop and crown us with a crown she rose and trembled toward the door the fire was low and in the gloom i only saw her eyes strange stars that wonderfully lit the room i followed her girl girl i cried for there was madness in my soul it was too late she closed the door and down the darkened stairway stole Four. The rain rushed by, the storm still blew, the dawn was lost in a great blur. I threw my window wide, alas, there was no single trace of her. I never saw her face again, but her strange eyes have haunted me. Through many a troubled day and year, I never dreamed such eyes could be. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love Hath a Chalice by Charles Hanson Town Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Love Hath a Chalice Love hath a chalice filled with glowing wine Wherefrom they drink who have confessed love's name and having tasted of that draught divine, their hearts go forth more holy than they came. I have seen one come softly from love's priest, with such exultance leaving that high place. I dared not look, I being among the least, save for one instant on his hallowed face. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Sword by Charles Hanson Town Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Sword 
The one I love the best hath stabbed me with a jest. To her it was a word, to me a shining sword. A sword that, having slain our love, falls not again back to its sheath. For see its bright blade rust in me. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Two Songs of London by Charles Hanson Town. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Two Songs of London. One, London Unvisited, 1910. London, I have not heard your thundering voice, save in my dreams. The magic of your name, your wonder and your fame, your glory and your shame. I have not known, save as the winds and hurricanes have blown, rumors of your wild passion to our shores. When will my heart beat with your iron heart? When will my pulses quicken and rejoice of your strange music, stranger than all art? You are a monster shell that holds the roar of the wild sea of life. So loudly rings the strife that even across the waste I hear you sing, faint as the murmur of a robin's wing above me on a silver morn of spring. I hear you as a sick man hears a fife in a far street, and the faint marching of ten thousand feet. He cannot see the pageant in the sun, the flashing sword and gun. Only the echo of the loud parade comes to his window, where he dreams, almost afraid. London, you are the heart of the wide world, wrapped in grey mist, how you must shine at night, an amethyst whose fiery beams reach through the terrible dark and flash to every corner of the earth. You are a woman with time's awful mark upon your brow, and you are foul and clean. You are a harlot and a holy queen. You are the terror and the joy of life, a desperate mistress and a patient wife. O oh, London, you are false and you are true. Evil or good, I am in love with you. 2. London Faces, 1911 I cannot forget those London faces, tragic eyes that haunt me yet, ghosts of men in terrible places, Shadows of women, I cannot forget. On the embankment they hurried by me, Stared at the Thames, and then moved on. The evening fog that hovered nigh me Hid them an instant, and they were gone. At Charing Cross and Piccadilly They followed my hansom through the rain. Nights were black and nights were chilly, but thick with the poor was each London lane. Pale, pinched faces, oh, how ye haunt me, thin, gaunt beggars with lifted hand. A sea is between us, but still ye want me, lonely derelicts tossed on the strand. A sea is between us, but I remember the leagues divide us, ye haunt me yet. Eyes with the age of bleak November, O oh, London faces, I cannot forget. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. An Easter Canticle by Charles Hanson Town. Read for LibriVox.org. By Nemo. An Easter Canticle. In every trembling bud and bloom that cleaves the earth a flowery sword, I see thee come from out the tomb, thou risen Lord. 
in every april wind that sings down lanes that make the heart rejoice yea in the word the wood thrush brings i hear thy voice lo every tulip is a cup to hold thy morning's brimming wine drink o oh my soul the wonder up is it not thine the great lord god invisible hath roused to rapture the green grass through sunlit mead and dew-drenched dell i see him pass his old immortal glory wakes the rushing streams and emerald hills his ancient trumpet softly shakes the daffodils thou art not dead thou art the whole of life that quickens in the sod green april is thy very soul thou great lord god end a poem this recording is in the public domain april madness by charles hanson town read for librivox org by nemo april madness there is a time when the young year goes mad with very ecstasy when all the rapture of the world is crushed in one wild melody it is the hour when april comes with silver flute and verile with magic pipe and madrigal and sings her happy heart away the bloom and wonder of the spring are vocal on her golden tongue the soul of music comes to earth and life and love and joy are young join o oh my heart in this wild song the jocund april sets you free drink the old wine of her new days go mad with very ecstasy and a poem this recording is in the public domain waiting by charles hanson town read for librivox org by nemo waiting i thought my heart would break because the spring was slow i said how long young april sleeps beneath the snow but when at last she came and buds broke in the dew i thought of my dead love and my heart broke too end a poem this recording is in the public domain the heights by charles hanson town read for librivox org by nemo the heights we climb the hills, the tumbling hills, the mighty shoulders of the world, when May was rich with daffodils, and spring's green banners were unfurled. We saw from our exultant height the quiet villages afar, the roads like ribbons clean and bright, the river a long silver bar. How great from the low plain we deemed the wind-swept summit of the hills, how beautiful the valley seemed up there among the daffodils and a poem this recording is in the public domain how softly runs the afternoon by charles hanson town read for librivox org by nemo how softly runs the afternoon how softly runs the afternoon beneath the billowy clouds of june how brightly every moment slips how lightly sail the great cloud ships how slowly all the galleons go within that airy sea of snow their white sails set vast argosies bound for mysterious hebrides ah let them vanish in the light beyond the sun beyond the night faring to harbors strange and dim beyond the great world's utter rim i shall not care i envy not their journeyings to lands forgot 
for in the wonder of your smiles my heart is on enchanted isles and in the silence of your soul i reach love's paradisal goal in the soft pressure of your hands i touch far magic fairy lands and in the rapture of your kiss i find the heavenly peaks of bliss beneath the billowy skies of june how softly runs the afternoon end a poem this recording is in the public domain the harvest of the sea by charles hanson town read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Harvest of the Sea In Memory of the Titanic The jealous sea moaned in the April night. Lo, there are comrades hidden in my heart, Unfortunates who sought me sick of life. But I am hungry for brave souls. I crave their warmth and passion through my chilling tides their heads upon my bosom and their hands like children's hands about me in the dark i need their blood in my cold loneliness a titan sailed her weary leagues of foam unknowing her strange wish her mad desire but there was menace in the starlit night and sudden doom upon deceiving paths and a wild horror on the mighty deep the gray sea laughed and drew those brave men down and braver women who but mocked at death seeing that love went with them these the souls the awful sea desired these the hearts she waited for in that stupendous hour they were enough to warm the arctic waste to fill with furnace heat the frozen zones and fire the very sea that was their grave. But dream not, mighty ocean, they are yours. We have them still, those high and valiant men, who died that others might reach ports of peace. Not in your jealous depths their spirits roam, but through the world today and up to heaven. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Glory Shall Follow Glory by Charles Hanson Town Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Glory Shall Follow Glory 1. Keats died, who knows, in the wild bloom of youth, and learned all truth, that Adonai might be sadly sung, that through the halls of heaven from Shelley's tongue that royal dirge might thrill and surge deathlessly young perhaps a poet passed that one might tell at last in this immortal song his beauty and glory chant his lament for shining days soon spent in a great glowing story two does love thus go whither we do not know that one may sing the grandeur of love's name that one who felt his fire and his flame may stand in adoration at his pall and in a song supreme majestical voice the eternal wonder of the dead ere love has fled silent are we before his face divine but when the lamps are wasted and the last cup is tasted and stern death sets her crown upon his head there is a singer who must sing love's praise record his dreams and days and keep the light forever before his shrine end a poem this recording is in the public domain an august night in the city by Charles Hanson Town. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo.
an august night in the city i know a sad park where on breathless nights throng those whom through the day the hot sun smites the pallid poor unlettered and alone whose hearts are hotter than the aching stone this is their dormitory here they fare after the summer noon's relentless glare see here they crowd like sheep without a fold while all around them rings the city's gold but there are coasts beside a lonely sea and hills and glens and many a wind-swept lee where man has never broken the silence deep yet here tonight an army falls asleep and a poem this recording is in the public domain Dust and Dream by Charles Hanson Town Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Dust and Dream Even as rust hides the sword's gleam, So earth's dull dust obscures heaven's dream. Yet do I trust death's hour supreme, For being dust I shall live the dream. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Nevertheless, by Charles Hanson Town, read for LibriVox.org, by Nemo. Nevertheless, one. He heard the fifes at the end of the street. He heard the marching of thousands of feet. The rush and the murmur, the beat of the drum, the sudden strange delirium. He saw the gold banners and flying flags, the rapturous faces of lads and hags, the light romance and the gleam of it all, the wonder, the magic, the dream of it all. But he did not see the lonely campfires burning on distant fields, and he forgot the yearning of aching hearts when nights were filled with dread. He did not see the piteous, helpless dead. He did not think of sorrow and alarms, the empty years that mocked his empty arms. He did not think of many a blood-stained hill. Yet had he thought, he would have followed still. 2. She heard the story old as the years she waited through nights of girlhood fears for the dream to come as come it must and make a glory of the dust she said no love shall be like ours life's roadway bright with eternal flowers she saw the beauty the light of it all and the terrible splendid might of it all but she did not know of days and nights of weeping heart-breaking absence and slow shadows creeping around her couch to hide love's blazing light she did not know love has its day and night and she forgot the thorns amid the roses forgot that sometimes love's book softly closes she did not know love's sorrows blind and kill yet had she known she would have followed still End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Risen Indeed by Charles Hanson Town. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Risen Indeed. How can I doubt that he is risen indeed, since at the spring's exultant birth, through his green earth, I see the flowering of each hidden seed, and feel again the old immortal need. How can I doubt, when through white lanes I pass, seeing the ancient beauty on the boughs in God's great house, hearing the bells at this Aprilian mass, seeing the congregation of the grass? 
how can i doubt nay let me bow my head before the wonder of the april flame in tears and shame since for one instant o oh black moment of dread i dared to think that the great lord was dead end of poem this recording is in the public domain the mystery by charles hanson town read for LibriVox.org by nemo the mystery they who have loved too well and been betrayed tried in the fire and utterly dismayed strange is it not how they return to love and bear their hearts to his great gleaming blade end a poem this recording is in the public domain penance by charles hanson town read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Penance Sometimes it seems to me the sea must ache with the vast loneliness its great heart knows. Its mighty beat, its thundering surge and sway, lost in the empty spaces, in the dark of desolate nights unpierced by any star. On coasts forlorn it sheds its tears in vain. Up storm-swept crags it sweeps with joy, and then falls back to sob in the old terrible way. Who knows but that for all the voiceless dead the sea has grasped and hidden in its heart, it now must pay with this wild loneliness, must beat forever on far solitudes of rock and ruin in unresponsive isles, and sing, colossal sinner of the world, an endless chant for its unending crimes? End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Pool by Charles Hanson Town Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Pool To that great poppy pool Whence all pale visions come Sleep led me only yesternight Her white lips sealed and dumb I found them there Old days that I had lost erewhile And lo, I found one dearer thing My vanished love's sad smile i drank of that blessed pool whose waters sang and tossed asleep i knew the ecstasy of all i ever lost and a poem this recording is in the public domain youth is cruel by charles hanson town Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Youth is Cruel Youth is cruel to the old. See it flaunt its locks of gold in the windy morns of spring. Hear its laughter, that mad ring mocking ages echoing. See its jubilant light skip in its own good fellowship crowding old ones from its way youth is cruel lackaday youth is cruel youth is blind nay it would not be unkind youth is heedless that is all as it sings its madrigal only crabbed age is small youth knows not its mighty strength till a sad day comes at length when it whispers in the cold, youth is cruel to the old. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Dead March by Charles Hanson Town. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Dead March. 
in Gotterdammerung. Not only did I hear the thundering chords that swept round Siegfried's bier, but I heard, mysteriously low, the far and solemn tread of the old army of the mighty dead. They who went marching long and long ago toward the great blinding glory of God's place, I saw each beautiful face. More beautiful now in death, I heard their quiet footfalls as they passed. I saw triumphant banners in the sun as one by one they filed before me happy happy at last i heard faint bugles and far mystic singing i heard the echo of a lark song ringing above the hushed solemnity and peace of the slow march that sang the great release they moved before me the exultant dead one came a glistening helmet on his head then popes and kings in white and purple and red and legions from old battles emperors and mighty captains from adventurous wars high poets and sad seekers of the grail with countenances pale imperial host that dazed me with their glory silent yet eloquent with death's new story a wonder on their lips i could not read i who was living indeed i saw them pass sinner and saint and sage sovereign and beggar of an ancient age tatters and pomp one at the final hour one one at last in that vast harmony the concentrated utterance of sound that every falseness drowned in a wide peace immortality profound beyond the borders of immensity and a poem this recording is in the public domain sunday by Charles Hanson Town, read for LibriVox.org, by Nemo. Sunday. When I was a very little lad, I used to go walking with my dad. Sunday, yes, that was the day for me, the day of days when dad was free. He always bought me a red balloon that seemed to me as big as the moon. And he always took me to some fine shop and gave me a glass of ginger pop. He took me out in the country, too, where buttercups and daisies grew. And on one big bridge we used to stand and watch the boats. It was fairyland. Dad died when I was still quite small. I think I missed him the most of all. And though I've seen most every sight, since i was such a tiny white i often long for those sunday walks my red balloon and our simple talks and i've sought but i never can seem to find those curious streets that used to wind to that wonderful bridge on which we stood and that flower-filled meadow by the wood yet i know if i found them the tears would start and i think it would almost break my heart. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Rush Hour by Charles Hanson Town. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Rush Hour. This is the big excitement of their lives this teeming rush hour six o'clock at night i never saw such tired eyes i never saw such faces so weary at the close of a hard day those bright electric bulbs in the thundering subway bring out the tragic lines on their tragic brows girls old before their time dizzily swaying 
in that awful conglomeration of human beings those merciless lights hiding no single blemish placed there with their flaming candle power so that the throngs may read their evening papers but some of the girls are far too tired to read they only hang on the straps sick with the noise of the train speeding uptown yet glad to hear it since it means to them that every moment they are near their sad homes it seems to me they are always rushing the forlorn sweatshop workers the tired sales girls the pale clerks who light a cigarette the moment that they leave the crowded subway hurrying rushing pushing shoving always moving in a monotonous procession in the morning they rush to perform miserable occupations in factories and lofts and darkened rooms and in the evening when the whistle blows they rush for the same inevitable cars that hurl them to their undesired homes always these tragic people are rushing rushing but some day they shall go slowly very slowly one at a time to a distant quiet place the only leisurely ride they shall ever know end a poem this recording is in the public domain the two old men by charles hanson town read for LibriVox.org by nemo the two old men there was something quaint and lovely about the two old men as they sat together in the crowded car i and the other young people around me watched them and heard their quiet conversation we gathered in that little trip downtown through the great city thundering with pain that these two wise yet simple comrades knew each other long ago and here revived through some exquisite accident their boyish friendship after many years we caught but fragments of their pleasant talk but quite enough to love them for the way they both recalled the record of old times and i thought when i am very old and very tired i hope god sends to me so naturally an old old crony to renew lost days a comrade whom i knew when i was young one unashamed as i to show his heart wholly to me unmindful of the crowd the curious crowd that might be all about us and a poem this recording is in the public domain anniversaries by charles hanson town read for LibriVox.org by nemo anniversaries always it is a woman who remembers of two who might forget a certain day whether it be a love's bygone novembers or happily out of the heart of may always a woman sits at life's cold embers seeking the gem where once a shining lay always it is a woman who remembers while heedless goes a man upon his way end a poem this recording is in the public domain noel by charles hanson town read for LibriVox.org by nemo noel one hark to each wonderful bell singing noel noel the jubilant chimes in a thousand towers swinging in winter like iron flowers lost in the cold december hours they sing and swing and the old world bring the wise old message that never dies under the steadfast starlit skies two 
the loud winds tell it is our noel and they echo the song of each clamoring bell they shout in the darkness over the snow and through the world the tidings blow the bells are the great glad voice of the lord and the winds are his angels in sweet accord whose whispers surge and sweep through the night where the watchers wait for the ancient light noel noel sings each sudden bell from the flowers and the towers come a wild noel three it is christ's own hour it is christ's noel and the sad world faints in the wonderful swell the voice of god rings down the years to hush our old discordant fears noel noel i hear him call a time of peace hath come to all his rapture shakes the moonlit hills his glory wakes our souls and thrills beyond the world beyond the sea to glory and infinity noel noel it is christ's own hour thunders each bell like an iron flower in every far and wind-blown tower End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Last Sleep by Charles Hanson Town. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Last Sleep. Some shining April, I shall be asleep, and over me the ancient joy shall pass. I shall not see young spring dance down the world with ribbons of green grass. But I shall dream of all that I have lost, breath of the wind, immortal loveliness, wild beauty of the sunlight on the hills, now mine no less. Because I slumber, nay, but more than mine, since I a part of them shall strangely be, only i ask when the pink hawthorn breaks that one shall think of me and a poem this recording is in the public domain end of beyond the stars by charles henson town